Hello everybody. Our next camera, the video at least, is only partly about a camera. A viewer had asked if I could do another video showing how to use the Ansco Ready Flash 620. So it'll partly be about the camera revisited and also about using uh, modern film in 620 cameras. The main thing is that the 620 spools are much narrower and the metal is very thin on the old metal ones. So not only do they make a more compact roll, they're a little bit shorter. And in the Ansco uh, Ready Flash and also in a Diana clone, I tried mixing a plastic 120 spool because it fit with the film spooled onto a 620, but because they clamp in so their tops are symmetrical, I don't know if you can see that, but the 620 is much shorter. You end up with kind of a crossways feed and it will scallop the bottom of the paper and the film. Don't want to waste a new roll. So what I did is on a 120 spool I cut some backing paper uh, to the same length as the actual film, taped it on in the same place where factory original film would be taped on to the 120. So this is how you re-spool 120 onto 620. You need a dark place. If you're using a bathroom or closet or under a blanket or something like that, give your eyes time to adjust fully. And if you can see anything, start over, make it darker, do the whole test again, or get one of these critters. This is a dark bag. It's a double-lined black bag, two zippers. I don't know how many times this thing has saved my bacon where I've had a film jam or something. Let's put the camera and something to put the film into once it's out of the camera. Put the whole mess in here and that way you've got a nice completely dark environment to do your rescue work. So what I'm going to show you now has to take place in the dark or in a dark bag. Believe me, it is a frustrating operation. Uh, it's worth it. I've screwed it up a couple of times. Um, as an alternative film photography project, and I have no financial stake in them, they're just kind of a cool company, they sell 620 spools, which for a long time were really rare, and they'll sell you already re-spooled onto a 620 spool 120 film. It's like 10 bucks a roll, empty spools are 5 bucks. So spring for it once and you've got two spools because you're going to need two no matter what. Anyway, um, I think that's a great way to go. It'll save you a lot of heartache, especially if you don't have a good dark place a lot of patience. We have cats running around here. It can be a little trying when they're attacking my hands when they're in the dark bag. So without further ado, remember this is all happening in the dark or in a dark bag. Pretend this is a new roll of 120 film. So you're actually going to have to do the spool job twice. Um, I tried just taking it off, back spooling it onto one of these does not work worth a darn, don't waste your time. But on what will be your take-up spool eventually, go ahead and get it fed, get it lined up as best you can because wrinkles and crooked feeding will make this a much bigger pain. So it seems like we got a fairly good start and you're going to want to give it a good tug as you're going so that you don't have any slack in here. Once you don't have wrinkles or anything, and I do have a little cross feed there. There we go. You may have to unwind it and do this again. So patience is key. This first time is slightly less critical, but if you wrinkle the paper, it's gonna make the re-spool, re-spool even worse. So take your time, make it nice and tight, Keep it nice and straight. You can see I've got 
the second set of backing paper. The center one is what's cut to the length of the 120 film. And I've taped it on just like you get it from the factory. The transition to where you're doing two layers is a little tricky. Just make sure you pull it nice and snug. 620 spools, when they're fully loaded, they'll be right up to the lip. I see the exposed label. So we're almost done with our first spooling job. So now that's if you were taking that as a take-up spool, but now it's backwards from what you need to load into the camera. So you take your other spool, which will become your su supply spool, and you're going to do the same thing in reverse. These usually have one longer slot and a thinner one, so you want to put it in the wide slot first. Just give it a good tug. It's not going to tear, so make sure that it's nice and tight. Anytime you start to get a wrinkle at the edge, just back it off part of a turn, pull it really tight, and just do a little mid-spool course correction. Coming up on the tough part here, and remember you're doing this in the dark, so you got to do it by feel, and it will act like this. The film will want to curl up, so you're going to want to pay attention and feel for it. Make sure it's laid out nice and flat. Roll it up, and once you've got the film started on the spool, now you're doing two layers. You're doing the backing paper and the film. Tug on it to make sure you got it nice and tight. And you can see I'm starting to get a little bit of bulge here. That always happens when you're re-spooling film. Don't worry about it. I'll show you what to do with it in a minute. Just keep the bulge moving along so that you're not getting wrinkles underneath here. Okay, so we're almost to the beginning of the film. When you get like this, and that's as far as you can go, and you've got this little bit of a bulge here, just pull the tape loose from the backing paper. Leave it attached to the film. Get it really nice and tight, pull on it pretty hard, and then re-tape it. Okay. So now the film is nice and flat against the paper. So you just continue spooling, spool up the leader. As you pass that tape, you're going to have to check for wrinkles again. I've got a little bit of a wrinkle there. So I'm going to back it off, bring it back in. This is why I recommend at least for your first time out with a 620 camera, just buy some film. And there we go. It's as if you bought a roll of 620.